Hi, my name is Trisha M. Lee, and I'm your host slash tutor slash guide through Big People Things, a show about how to be a successful adult. I'm so happy that you're joining us. That's a sign that you're interested in growing into a well-adjusted, well-functioning, purposeful, thriving adult. We'll be here once a week with our special guests, so subscribe and turn on notifications to see when we release new content. Now, our first guest today is Joel Grant. He's a musician, singer, songwriter for over 10 years. Specifically, he's a boss, live and recording session drummer. He is also the husband of one beautiful wife, Ashley. And our other special guest is Chavelle Grayson, an illustrator, graphic designer, and entrepreneur. Her brand is Kingdom Quality T-Shirt Designs because she not only believes in excellence as a habit, but also in building her community. Joelle Chavelle, thanks for being here and welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having me. I'm sure people are going to get excited about the topic that we're going to be talking about. Mm. So today that topic is one in the middle. And the thought behind this is that life will always have its ups and downs. And we are the person in the middle of it having to make the decisions about how to respond. For instance, there was a time when we felt fairly secure in putting our money in the bank and saving and investing large sums. But recently in Jamaica, our financial sector has experienced digital scammers, employee embezzlement, cash courier heists, et cetera, et cetera. And those are some stuff that we never thought we would see. We thought it would be left to movies, right? But for most of us, like almost all of us, the monetary system is outside of our control. So we can't do anything to fix it. And this could all leave us feeling very uncertain, very fearful. I've been standing at ATMs already and a certain truck drives up and some people leave the line. <laughs> Other people who were pulling up to stop just continue driving, right? So we really have to look at and determine from early, as early as possible, who we're going to be, how we're going to feel, no matter how our circumstances or the people around us change and vary. Because we're human and we're prone to doubts and fears. We need a center to hold on to, like a, a core belief or principle that keeps us stable keeps us authentic and real, keeps us honest, whether we're seeing good or bad times. So what is that best thing? Is it a close-knit family? Is it God? Or is it just that a deep belief in yourself? Today, we're going to explore what contributes to successful adulting. So Joel and then Chavelle, I'd like you to... Or rather, let's start with Chavelle. Can you tell us a little bit about your history as it relates to your search for that central stabilizing force? My search, um, honestly, um, I don't think I, I wouldn't refer to it as a search in the beginning. I was kind of just living um, as best as I knew how to. Um, but there was a desperation that kind of came about once I went to those places that I thought would have given me that that security and found none of it. So mm -hmm. that was it was kind of after that I kind of said, you know, there must be something else apart from all of this. And so that search kind of the, the, the hunger, I call it, I would call it like a hunger. Mm hmm kind of developed after trying multiple things, um, okay. relationships, parties, the likes, and figured that, you know, there's still something else. There's just this unrest that I cannot shake. And that kind of started when I went down into a very deep depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you talk just very kind of briefly about some of those things that you, you searched for. Were there any of them that you thought was like really healthy that really would have worked? Like this, this will be the thing? Yes. 
my relationship. Mm -hmm. I was in a relationship with someone I loved very much from we were together from we were 16. Mm -hmm. Um and we I mean it was it was a dream for me. We left um high school. Um he was a bit older than me, so we left high school, came to Kingston. I went to college, you know, he was working, all of that. So it was like the dream and everybody would be like, oh, you guys are goals, couples goals. <laughs> so it was, it was really a bad job for to wear that relationship, honestly. I felt like I had worked hard at it. I worked proudly, um, even though it was a bit toxic, though, when I look at it. It was a bit toxic here and there, but I worked proudly. Um, it was the one thing I knew that felt safe and I felt grounded in it and I just held on dearly to it mm. until I did. <laughs> okay, okay. So we're 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 gonna come back to that, but I want Joel to just chime in here on what are some of the ways um to cope with the ups and downs of life that you've tried and perhaps found out didn't work. Um so there's a saying that wisdom is learning from the experiences of others. Um, and I have largely lived by that. So I grew up in church. Mommy and daddy are pastors. So, you know, them, them, they're kind of saying, you know, them say, um, you're born safe or you're born a Christian type of vibe. <laughs> um, but really, I started my journey with the Lord at age eight. So very early. Um, and throughout that period, I've just been looking on at others i've seen people go to parties i've seen people you know do the drugs and then try the sex and all of that stuff but i've seen that most if not all of them always come to a point in their lives where it's just like this is not doing it for me and i realized that i found something that was doing it for me so i just stuck closely to what was working for me which is just having god at the center of my life and having good christian relationships in terms of friendships and family and stuff like that so that is what that's what I believe is most mm -hmm. um, important because that's the experience that I've lived where God is just the center of everything and um, life happens around that fact that God is the center. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I'm I'm glad that you shared that quote. I feel like that's what we're definitely going to drop on the social pages as well. You don't have to learn from your own experiences. Right. You can learn from the experiences of others. Um, so, Chavel, now back to you, as you were talking about just thinking that the relationship would have been the thing that would have, that did keep you grounded um, for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it relates to a significant low point in your life and how it changed you. So I don't know if you want to talk about the relationship or some another low point in your life um, that was significant and that kind of was a wake up call to you, if you want to share that. Yeah. So I just wanted to highlight that relationship. You said something about relationship being, I mean, I looked for solace and peace in a relationship. However, mm -hmm. it was more of a human relationship. So the truth is the Lord has created us for a relationship and that hunger, that desire that I had for that relationship was basically just an idol. No, I have found a relationship with him. Mm, okay. That I am pursuing. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. He to clarify the type of relationship. Type of relationships, you know. Um, mm. But the extreme low point for me, and what I learned from that was when the Lord told me to walk away from that relationship. So you you had a relationship with God before no, while you no, were in the. I didn't actually. So mm. I I. I, I yeah, for tell me more about that one. Explain well, that one day because no people kind of, believe yeah, say yes. I so only I was, I like that Joel, I like Joel. At eight, uh -uh. I wasn't. I wouldn't tell me. I mean, I knew that he was a god. You know, gotta be universe and whatever because my mother would have taught me. I grew up with those disciplines, you know. Um, but I mean, I was aware. I was aware of. God, I used to read my Bible. I've visited church now and then, you know, like a conference, like a rally, them and thing. So I have a basic knowledge, a basic understanding of who God was. Um, so during that time when I, at that low point of depression and figuring, said, this really, it's really not working and it more feeling like a strain on me than anything else. 
I started to really pray more and seek the Lord in, in through just worship. I used to just find, I used to Google and find like just something scripture based to just hold on to during that time. And then I started to understand that, listen, okay. So I started to get a prompting like, Shavel, I think you should move out. And first time I felt it, I was like, no, I, this cannot be. Oh, so you didn't live with him? Yeah, man, we lived 10 no. years. Deep. It was basically a marriage. Okay, it was 10 years together and we were living together everything out of college live together it was a whole thing um and i remember when the lord said you need to move that was in january and i got baptized in april i, I did not know that i was going to get baptized because i was planning to go to ati in august for my birthday and then so in january i would have heard made me have my plans Joel. i had plans <laughs> the lord said um yeah, I think you should move. And I'm like, first of all, I don't have the money to live on my own. I've never lived on my own. From the leave country, come to Kingston, it's just me and him. We've, we, we are the only support that we know, you know. And so I don't have the savings. I don't know how to do the bus thing. I don't know how to take bus and those things. <laughs> Oh, so because because him also drives, so, he drives, so he all of those little comforts. You didn't really live the life for children. I was living the life. I was comfortable. I was comfortable. Um, but then the Lord said it, and I mean, when I responded to the move, it was very difficult. Every, I feel, I feel like everything was just pulled from underneath me. That foundation that I had built was just ripped from underneath me, and I just went. Down, down after that, I was. Did you have I, to move back in with family or? No. So what the Lord did was he, he told me to look for a place. Usually when persons are, are seeking apartments and them something, they do it on a Sunday. I got my apartment on a Wednesday. Okay. In the middle of the week. Mm -hmm. And I baptized the Sunday. And by the Wednesday, I got somewhere. And mm -hmm. the Lord was like, you're out of here by Saturday. <laughs> so it was, everything was just like, I'm like, okay, this is happening. And he helped, he helped me move. And, and at the time, I was still holding on to the relationship. I was like, okay, God, you have a way to separate and bring back together. And I'm hoping that is what is, that, is about to happen right now. <laughs> so I was still holding on to it, honestly. So when he separated me and um, um, I was living by myself, no, everything became real. I know I had to bring my car to the mechanic, service my car, pay the bills. If, if anything was broken in the house, fix it, Javel. If you don't know how to fix it, I had to learn now how to operate. And what the Lord said to me, I'm teaching you how to be independent from people, but completely dependent on me. Mm -hmm. And that is what I learned. So I kind of just released it. But it was very difficult i cried it was hard it was hard mm -hmm. and i and i think that that's what stops um perhaps a lot of people from making the change because they know what them will face and yeah everybody wants soft life i don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that but it's 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 wrong when you know it's leading you down the wrong path or it's kind of wasting your life yeah um and that's largely what the soft life does so sometimes it's it's tough decisions that we have to make regarding the things that we rely on. Sure. Um, but I think whether you're in, in at the bottom or you're on top, we still need God. So Joel, I don't want it to seem like, you know, your life has been all roses, but I, I would, however, like to hear like what was a major high point in your life and a lesson that you might have taken from that about, you know, holding on to that center. Two different high points. Mm -hmm. I, so, I think my life. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to clarify the question, but if it's cool for you, then that's good. But some, and why I ask the question is because sometimes when we when we have certain successes in life, it can lead us to go to a place of pride or feel like, okay, yeah, this is the thing that has brought me security now. But how do you how do you deal with that? Because just as how um kind of valley type experiences can have us scrounging for ways to cope the mountaintop ones can as well 
So what would you say was a major high point in your life? I think maybe the establishment of my career as a musician, because um, that started at age 19. And the successes that I've had throughout the years is just like God just set up everything um, where people would have struggled to, you know, get into the industry or start to play for different, different people. It wasn't that struggle for me. God just kind of opened doors and I just kind of just walked through them as life goes. Um, but because of the career path, I believe that leaning on God is, has just been so integral because I've chosen to just play gospel music, which um, if we're aware of what gospel music is in, is in Jamaica, it's not very financially um, as the word, fruitful. So it's really just trusting God and leaning on him for, for um, the resources to just to make it through. And for me, it's less about the establishing of the career more about the journey of faith that God has brought me through and how he has used what is my joy and passion to, you know, build character in me, but also sustain me. And, you know, there are high points in the career um, where you play for ex artists or you go overseas and play for other people and blah, 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 them type of stuff there. But mm -hmm. at the center of it all is just like God showing me that he's the one that opens doors and he's the one that, you know, provides resources and provides faith and blessing and all of that. So, yeah, through the high points, is, is there still that reliance on, sorry, on God and just having him just guide my life and show me where he wants me to go. So, yeah. Mm, awesome. So um, it's been established then that that one thing in the middle of both of your lives that's keeping you is God. Um, but what I'd, I'd like to find out is, and Joel, you can say this one, what, what kept you? I mean, you got saved at eight. A lot of Jamaican children get saved um, around that age group. But after a while, they walk away from it and they let it go. What was the difference with you? Why did you maintain this connection um, for so long? And then, Chavel, I'd love to hear from you. What was one of the reasons you cut ties, as you say, with church and that kind of lifestyle? Uh, what were some of the things you saw that, you know, were now that you're looking back at it? you probably could have responded to it differently. But Joel, let me hear from you first. Um, yes, yeah, so getting saved at age eight, people would tend to think that, you know, it's a parent's course, you to do it. But I remember very distinctly hearing the voice of the Lord saying, Joel, I want you to get baptized tonight. Um, mm -hmm. And I, that's how my, my journey really started. And what has sustained me is, I believe my parents introducing me to the Holy Spirit. So we know God and we know Jesus. But those, those persons in, in the Godhead can feel very it's like God the Father is all the way up there and then Jesus in the come little closer but all we have is the writings about him. Um but the Holy Spirit is the one that kinda makes things personal. Mm -hmm. He's the one that comes alongside you, that guides you into truth and knowledge and just make you feel like there is a connection between you and God. So when my parents introduced me to the Holy Spirit like at a young age. He is the one you now that come come alongside me and say, Oh Joel, I don't want you to do this, I want you to do this type of thing. And just help to guide my life. And mm -hmm. like very strong convictions of like I don't want to go to parties. Uh I mean they're the uh, in a teenage years they're the urges. I mean in your life they're the urges, you know, to go off and start the sexual stuff and that stuff that kind of thing. But Stronger than those urges, I believe, was my conviction. Like, you really can do this. You're not supposed to be doing it. And I've gone, I've been in situations where it were, just if, if I was there a second longer, it would have been a different <laughs> type of outcome, you understand? Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit is just, I really feel like he's the one that has just been holding me. And then the outworkings of him holding me is like sending different relationships in terms of, um, friends. So I remember there's a low point in my life where I was really struggling with um, an addiction to like, porn pornography and that stuff. Um, like, really, really a struggle. And it, it feel like, say, so basically, they just done with God and done with like um, the Christian thing. We still have a church, we still a 
every time when you know worship setting when they mother raise my hands i'm like i feel the conviction i still feel like we did it but you know that that little dryness they were mm-hmm. it's just young you know so young god no good mm-hmm. and i was in that space for like a good good couple of years and then the conviction of the lord just rest on me and like joel i needed to come back um and i said all right fine if you want me to come back then you have to send me some friends because we can't go do this on my own and then shortly after i got introduced to some friends who are like dear my dear friends to me now so this is like back mm-hmm. in high school and them just trod road with me till till i am where i am now yeah mm-hmm. so awesome because that's that's one of the things um i wanted to to ask you about as well it's it's difficult for some children growing up or i wouldn't even say some probably for all children who have accepted jesus as savior um there is you are different yeah. because of that conviction of the holy spirit so how do you deal with being different how do you deal with being the odd man out um so for you yeah you 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 knew that you had a relationship and you could ask god for that help and he gave your friends that probably helped to build that confidence in you so that even if you are different from other guys in your class who they might love up the porn and they might talk about it and they might bring the magazine come school uh, all of them things there you're still okay because god you were convicted and you know god is taking you out of it but do you have anything to um encourage anybody who is not so okay with being different like how can they kind of get over that hurdle because as desires as com- as humans we desire connection and acceptance from others and sometimes mm-hmm. it's knowing that i'm accepted by the lord over here but lord why are you making me so weird and so different and so separate i mean do you have anything to share about yeah, well, sure. so high school was a was an interesting time because i never quite fit in anywhere so you have the guys that are like you know i'm i'm all about the sex and me me i do this with this girl or or them into drugs or whatever and then you have the other side the other side now with the christians who are i mean super weird i'm sorry so the isf guys no <laughs> so, a, lot, a lot of them were a little um, effeminate as well. I'm just like, mm. so, we can't part with the Christian man them. But we know so we can't part with the, the other brother them because that, that just not going to work out for me. So somewhere in the middle. Um, but in that space uh, of just being like awkward and just not quite fitting in anywhere is where I realized that one, people lie. People love to lie. And them love tell them love make themselves more than they are. So the guys them come and tell come and tell me to them have sex with which girl and blah blah. They lie. Lie. They lie them at them. <laughs> and so what it kinda helped me to do is, is kind of form an understanding of myself and an an identity of who I am in that space where I'm just the guy I'm the I'm the guy that's a Christian, but I can't hang. You know, so I had friends that are them they weren't Christians but they never do the, the hard sex thing. And they never try to push it for me. So that I had mm-hmm. that space where I could have just be me mm-hmm. and um and just have people that accept me. And I, my encouragement to, to to whoever is listening is that you don't have to be forced into a mold. You don't have to be what people say that you need to be. Figure out who you are and then people will be attracted to that. And they hold on to those people. Don't 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 allow peer pressure or you know the different pressures of life to allow it to, to cause it to be forced to be something that you're not in that space of not having the friends that you want figure out who you are mm-hmm. and then you'll start to see values and start to see different character traits in others that align with who you you found yourself to be great joel that seems, sounds like i need to bring you back for the episode on friendships so we will talk mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah but chavel um you as well just wanted to share um as i had said the, yeah, your perspective on some of the things that would have made you look at the church and go, no, the same for me when you were younger. Honestly, I never, I, I wasn't, I never look at the church and say it was not for me. I always knew I was supposed to serve the Lord. I was just waiting for the time. So my thing was, Lord, do not allow me to die right now. Every day that was my prayer because if I die, <laughs> I know I'm going to hell. So just <laughs> and I'm being honest, like from when I was a child, those have always been my prayers. Because I knew 
I, I understood that where I was, I was in sin. And if I die right here, I am going to hell. So I it wasn't it that. wasn't anything wrong that the church did. did it church, or your church experience. Me, we, um, I was the first in my entire family to get baptized. Mm. So there was nothing. We we nothing. Mm. I was all for the church. I just never had a church home. So with my mother, my parents, they never had a church home. So we just mm-hmm. visited different different churches and get different different stuff from you know. Ah. And, and then there was a season in my life where we were not going to school. So we were homeschooled. So for two years, we were just doing Bible studies in the morning until noon. And then after that, we would do like work, schoolwork stuff. So there was a foundation and an impor- my mother knew the importance of having biblical principles instilled in us from a young age. But I was just not a part of a church community like that so i always knew that i wanted to serve the lord i was just waiting for that time waiting for the time my time would have been like like 50 because that is what i saw like all all christian like that is what i saw in my community like all people christian so Mm -hmm. maybe that's at the age when god called you Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. when he called me at 28 i was like oh (laughs) (laughs) so we're doing this right now you know so i kind of made that decision to just drop drop everything and just follow him because as i said i would have tried and my my my, my hope was in that relationship and the lord showed me that that was an idol you know and so he separated me um from that age and one of the things that I really stood firm on was just knowing that. So, so, so even through those difficult times, I'm just trying to figure out stuff, figure out who I am. The beautiful thing about it is I found out who I was during that time of separation. I found out who I was in God, who he created me to be, what I love. I find that in relationships, you tend to compromise a lot. So if you want to eat the ice cream and him don't want to eat the ice cream, you're not bad want the ice cream. So if you want to watch the sunset and you don't want to watch the sunset, you're not going to watch the sunset. You understand? So there mm-hmm. was a lot of that. So then I, 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 after, after I came down, because that is what I did, I humbled myself and I came down. And I started to spend some time with the Lord. I started to, to like myself, to love myself. Oh, Lord, you, you, you've created me so beautifully. I, I like to watch the sunset. And there are things that I like to do that bring me such joy. That I was rubbing myself off because of me trying to be who this relationship wants me to be, you know. Um, so I really found joy in knowing that during that time of separation, I found God. And that's like the greatest thing. There was nothing, this is, like, this is the greatest pleasure for me, honestly, because yeah. my relationship with him has helped in my relationship with everyone else. So now I know how to be a better sister. Now I know how to be a better friend. Now I know how to be a better co-worker. You know? And it is all just because I step aside from making human relationships my core and having a relationship with God as the center. So from that, everything just kind of expanded and I, and I really began to see who Shavel Grace was. You know? Yes. And everybody just kind of came on the board you know came on board and whatever it's beautiful it's a beautiful process it's a beautiful becoming process yeah and it, it must have been so comforting feeling your life moving forward because i'm, I'm guessing 10 years yeah. in a relationship living somewhere but still not yeah. seeing any kind of forward movement not knowing yes you 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 get some assets together but you you'll always know in the back of your mind this this isn't quite it like no. it's, yeah. it's, I'm almost there, but there's something that's yeah. not quite it. I but remember I, the Lord saying that is a liability and not an asset. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 it costs me that's more. a word right there. It costs me more to keep it, you know. So that's a word right there. Uh, and I, I appreciate how you said that you came down, you had to humble yourself because at the beginning, you're saying that it wasn't that anything was wrong with the church you knew you're supposed to follow God. It's like you had, you, you heard the message of 
what Jesus is saying, what we call the gospel or the good news, and you understand it and you you accept it kind of mentally that, yeah, this is something good for me to do, but it was still, now nah, I'm going to still do things my way and maybe God can just be on the side. Mm -hmm. um, which is why you could ask him every day, Lord, just preserve my life because I just still want to live my life my way. Yeah. And that probably happens for a lot of people as well. They, they grow up in the mm -hmm. church and they've heard the word and they've seen some examples of it being real. Uh, or even if they haven't, God has spoken to their heart and let them know, hey, I'm real and I'm really here and mm -hmm. I'm for you and all of that. But it's still like, I'm going to see for myself, as Ariel Fitzpatrick usually says. So it's interesting that we can have um, similar experiences with God, personal experiences with God, but still choose to go one way or the other. He gives us that freedom, and that's great. It's important for us to know where it leads. So... Definitely thank you guys for sharing. So before we wrap up, do you have any brief closing words of encouragement for our audience? Um, I guess, Chavelle, you could go first, and then Joel, you could just close it out. Yeah. Um, what I want to close with is just a lot of times, you know, in this in this Christian life, we have ups and downs. And I think I think people still tend to sell oh, narrative. So pick up in just... So in the Christian life, we still also have ups and downs. Yes. That's something important I want people to know. Yes. It's, not just, it's not just when you're not a Christian life going to be like this and then, oh, you become a Christian, it's like, woohoo, on top of the mountain. No. She said, in this Christian life, <laughs> you will have ups and downs. So yeah. Yeah, continue. Um, so in this Christian life, when you have the ups and the downs, I think what's important to remain and to know is that God is good. Like, a lot of times we take the rebuke of God for something like, oh, you're against me. Like, scripture says that he's not against us. He's for us. So, so that is something that I really want us to remember. When you lose the job, when the mortgage needs to pay, when everything is piling up, God is still good. And his word says that he works all things out for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purposes. That's one. When it's good, remember that the glory belongs to him. You did not put yourself there. You know, you're not in control of anything. So when it's low, remember that he is good. And when it's high, you give him all the glory and you give him all the praise. Yeah. And just yeah. remain humble. Just remain humble. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Man. <laughs> um. What I'll add is uh, a core principle for me, which is God is the center and everything, life is the periphery. So we often end up questioning the, the character of God or the goodness of God because of life, viewing life, allowing life to cause us to see God differently. I mm -hmm. want, what I try to do is allow God to cause me to see life differently. So I try and look at my life or the different activities that occur in life. So if I'm not money or if there's sickness in my body or in my family or whatever, I don't allow that to color my perception of God, but I allow God to color the perception of the situation. Um, and I feel like that is a very important thing to do. It's not easy to hold on to, to be fair, because life, is, life bombards you and it's easy to be like, yo, God, you forsake me, or, you know, mm -hmm. God in a day, a type of vibe. But the truth is that it, his word says that he'll never leave nor forsake us, right? Yes, yes, yes. So if we can hold that as the truth and allow life to happen around that truth, then hold that perspective, then I believe that we will start to appreciate um, how God is all in the mix and has never left us nor forsaken us. Um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like that is a is a is something that really really helps it's as i say it's not easy to come back to that perspective but if we can hold the word of god and mm -hmm. who god has revealed himself to be and the character of god um as the truth and then life happens around that truth then i feel like we can you know better navigate different different difficult situations 
Very well said. Very well said. Because you're right. We often do come from the other perspective. Our parents used to tell us growing up, life does not revolve around you. <laughs> and I think because that's our natural leaning, that's innately what we wanna what we wanna think and how we operate. But it, it takes that shift in mindset, trusting that God is really who life revolves around. Yeah. And it's then easy live. to believe that we are in control. You know, scripture says we roll the dice of our life, but the Lord determines where they fall. That's right. That's He's exactly a... what I was doing. I was rolling them dice. Yeah, he determines the outcome. Yeah. So actress, there's an actress called Mae West, and she once said, you only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. Mm -hmm. So while you're still breathing, you know, while you still have the opportunity to live life well, no matter what comes at you, I believe that for our guests, you can be the steady, solid, authentic one in the middle of it. The key is choosing the right one in the middle to stand on. So if today you decide to choose God for the first time or again after walking away, I've put a link in the description below. And it has some steps that you can take if that's your decision today. And we'd love for that to be your decision today. And pray that, you know, God would support you in that and that you'd know you can talk to him about the difficulties of the transition, the difficulties that will come with, with being that person who is different, but who would live a way better life on a more solid foundation when the storms and the sunshine come at you. So thanks again, Chavelle and Joel, for sharing with our students. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you, our students, for watching. Now, you can connect with Joel and Chavelle at their social media links in the description below and on screen right now. They are awesome young people who are doing a lot of really productive stuff. Joel is putting out some good music. I said, sometime when you see him on stage, you know that this guy was born for this. Okay. And Chevelle is inspiring people in her community with her t shirt line, Kingdom Quality. Kingdom Quality. Kingdom Quality. So definitely check out their social media links mm -hmm. and um, support them in the work that they're doing. We also ask that you please subscribe and share the link to Big People Things everywhere. You can also follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Big People Things. Ask your questions in the comments section below and we'll respond. And it's our prayer that you found the show helpful today. And we'll leave you with this quote from Isaiah 32, 19 to 20. Even if the forest should be destroyed and the city torn down, the Lord will greatly bless his people.